You're now listening to the Something Good Podcast Network. Please press any key to continue. everybody you're listening to another great something good network podcast this uh this week we're uh, starting something new here we kind of teased a little bit here with uh kaiju kingdom in our halloween series on the uh, something good network kaiju paradise now yeah now we're kaiju paradise because my ass was too lazy to look up a title. i know it <laughs> we were giving hell for it uh, a little while ago we we're just like uh guys do your re-, like do your research come on man let's do your research looking at all this kind of stuff you know before we dive into it but you know we're still gonna keep talking about the shit we love like monster movies and things like that so uh we're calling this one uh, kaiju paradise and bum, 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 bum. <laughs> <laughs> what a paradise it is my name is cap nun and with me as my co-host is one and only chris morrison bum, 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 bum. <laughs> and uh if you've heard the other two uh, episodes we've done so far it's been uh mainly a godzilla theme very godzilla centric because that's what you know toho is famous for oh yeah but uh, on today's episode, we kind of want to talk about Toho as a whole. And, yeah. uh, of course, Godzilla will be brought up here and there. But, you know, there's other monsters in their catalog, too, like, say, Mothra and Rodan. And, uh, Fuck Rodan. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, even their own versions of King Kong and uh, a lot of lesser-known cr- uh, creatures, too, like Atragon and Varen and stuff like that. But, you know, monster movies in general will always be fun to us. So, yeah. And Toho is kind of the... Uh, flagship studio that uh produced a lot of the uh the classics if you will at least from japan oh yeah because they had uh you've had gamera and stuff like that but that didn't get uh toho distribution until like the 90s i don't think um you don't get distribution rights until late late and then they all break up because all the studios are getting bought out here and there especially during the 70s because aip goes out the door right around that time yeah, but like in the 50s, that's just kind of where I think the 50s is where just monster movies in general were kind of just at its peak as far as, you know, uh, splendor and glory and, uh, you know, really grabbing an audience's attention where that can really, uh, you know, the imagination is still there and it still looks, you know, it's groundbreaking at the time, especially with a movie like Rodan, where it's, uh, you know, the monster's not breathing fire or using any superpowers. Like a, a monster like Rodan is just, it's just a, di- a giant pterodactyl that moves really fast and just kind of just creates gusts of wind and that's yeah. it uh so we have godzilla in what 1955 yeah uh 1954 is yeah. when godzilla king of the monsters originally uh uh gets uh screenings in japan mm-hmm. and uh you know they had a follow-up uh, that, that was like the quintessential you know monster movie you know for the longest time that was like you know but that was based based off of a uh Ray Harry Housen movie called uh, Beasts of Twenty Thousand Fathoms, yeah. which uh, in the, in the states they've been uh, that was a lot of there's a lot of stop motion animation monsters mm-hmm. and they're all like uh, either prehistoric. Well, Beasts of Twenty Thousand Fathoms first off was uh, based off of a similar concept from Godzilla, where it's yeah. a radioactive dinosaur that uh, terrorizes New York City, and uh, they have to. And uh, it's just uh, this is also at a time where you know uh, nuclear war and uh, nuclear uh, fallout is on everybody's mind yeah which uh lends to uh you know everybody to the fear of everybody's uh you know perception of these monsters and but it's all but uh space is also involved with uh monster movies as well like there was a movie called uh 20 million miles from earth Mm -hmm. that also had a ray harryhausen monster in it i can't remember what it was called but it was like a beast from uh venus that would uh grew that uh grew from a small like uh you know gerbil size to uh and a giant monster size, not like a Godzilla, but about as big as like a, an elephant. Cause yeah. there's even a, there's that famous scene in that movie where it wrestles a stop motion elephant too like in the middle giant. of Rome. That's hilarious. Yeah. It sounds hilarious, but you know, I like watching stop motion, uh, stuff like that from the fifties just cause some, some of it kind of holds up to an extent because I like that craft too. Yeah. This is before like Jurassic park and CGI and all that stuff too. Um, so what's funny is like the, some of the first like stop motion, 
like land of the lost type stuff yeah um so sir arthur conan doyle the guy who pinned sherlock holmes and stuff yeah swore up and down he thought that shit was real <laughs> like even back then like we have cgi now that looks fucking fantastic What's but cr- but back then then when they saw that they're like holy shit that's fucking real well, what's crazy is like if you watch a movie like one million bc with uh, mm-hmm. raquel welch and all the cavemen fighting dinosaurs you see the stop motion dinosaurs kind of um walk around and uh and destroy set pieces or like the stop motion creatures mm-hmm. uh walk around in this and destroy all these set pieces but it looks like it's happening in real time so to me that's still very impressive even to this day even with all the cgi uh nuances that filmmakers make these days well like you know the one we grew up with still holds up today is jurassic park yeah that's a lot of that's puppetry and then you know even the cgi still 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 holds up it still holds up it still looks very realistic when the t-rex and the raptors are fighting in the in the lobby Uh uh-huh it's still like, God damn, you can still see like the pixel flesh and then like the tears and rips and stuff like that. Granted, the raptors were puppets, but like the whole CGI fight at the end of the movie is fucking fantastic. And it doesn't look like a dated version of CGI or anything no. like that, even though it's still relatively a new, uh, uh, you know, an early stage of CGI in film. Yeah. It's not like, you know, some of the CGI we saw in like Blade. Right. <laughs> Which is like, you know, 10 years later. <laughs> exactly. Like, some some reason, the late 90s, early 2000s just looked like... They shit on it. PlayStation 2 graphic style yeah. characters or stuff yeah. like that. But, of course, nothing's more fun than seeing a bu- seeing uh, dudes in rubber suits lighting themselves on fire for our amusement. Oh, man. I felt bad for some of these guys. God, um, you watch some of the... Some of the Godzilla movies in particular where uh, they would just go... When they had a budget <laughs> and would just go all out on fucking explosives. Oh, man. It was like Power Rangers, you know, growing up watching Power Rangers. I don't, you know, I didn't think about it, you know, then, but now you're like, fuck, dude. Someone had to build Angel Grove all over again after uh-huh. every episode. And not just that, they had to plant explosives perfectly because, like, growing up, you know, you don't see them stab them. You see them, like, take a swipe and then it's like an anime cut. Basically. You know, and then, like, doo 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 doo, you know, they got to put blood squibs and. You know, basically firecrackers on top of the suit that explode in sequence to make it look like, oh man, he you know he was attacked. You know the Zord, or the, what I forget, uh, yeah, Zords. Yeah, well then it's a, when it's a robot uh, yeah. creatures and stuff like that. It's like if it's a robot creature like fighting a uh, you know uh, a monster or something like that. It's just you know guys are just you know fucking just lighting themselves on fire just yeah. uh, with all of the like say in uh, the Mecha Godzilla movies in the seventies where like. Uh, Mecha Godzilla's powers are like missiles and of uh, you know mouth beams, eye beams. The guy in the Godzilla suit is just like running away, just like ablaze. And you're like, God, I hope this guy got paid a fucking raise to do this fucking movie. And then we get like ones we just watched a while ago. Yeah, where the, the, it's it's lazy. Yeah, there's it's like the 1970s for a lot, for a giant monster movies wasn't exactly a peak time for him or anything like that either. No. So that was almost like 20 years, you know, after, like, like we were talking about, the 50s were kind of, we're, we're still leaving, you know, a lot of imagination to moviegoers yeah. seeing stuff like this, and it's still fresh. And it never really, like, you know, picked up, uh, never improved until CGI came along to really, yeah. like, give the, uh, to r- give creatures like that a more realistic and terrorizing, you know, approach. Yeah. Uh, but to, what's, uh, so you know more about this than I do because I haven't seen all the individual ones. I've seen all the Godzilla movies, but I haven't seen the individual monster movies as much as you has. Yeah. Um, so after Godzilla, what was the first uh, big Toho? See, post Godzilla. See, after Godzilla, that you had uh, you had Rodan, in which we mentioned, and nineteen fifty nineteen fifty six, and that was like the first uh, flying monster. Uh, outside of like maybe say the giant claw from the fifties, but that was just such a god awful goofy looking monster too mm-hmm. but uh the rodan but the rodan um you know suit is still an odd concept because it's still supposed to be like a flying monster mm-hmm. but, but he walks around more you know. yeah you see him like you know walking ar- yeah walking around the ground but in that movie at least in particular when it shows him the, the flying scenes mm-hmm. you know how in most of these movies if you see a flying creature it looks like super fucking stiff yeah. where it's like just on fucking wires and the and the wings aren't flapping at all but Rodan just kind of flies down like it's a fucking jet because that's what the, uh, you know, the, the, uh, the superpower is. I mean, then you had, uh, you know, monsters like Mothra. Mothra had a, a solo movie before mm. 
it became a Godzilla a Godzilla enemy. Yeah, or a friend, or however you want to say it. Yeah, depending on whatever the movie's called for. Yeah. Uh, so going into this one, um, the the movie Rodan came out in 1956. Mm-hmm. Uh, you can watch it streaming on HBO Max. Yep. Yeah. Uh, um, <laughs> the story: a mining village. In a mining village, strange deaths have been occurring. Victims are soon murdered, and an investigation is launched. A true culprit is discovered. Mega Newlin. Yeah. An ancient insect species. So this one also has another kaiju yeah. in it. Yeah, this one's weird. It's like you go into it uh, expecting a full on just Rodan movie, but they kind of give you a monster movie before the monster. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you the know? creature briefly ravages the village before venturing back into the mine, realizing what they're up against troops with machine guns into the mine after it. However, their weapons have no effect and requires the mine cart ramming into the beast to kill it. Victories are cut short as the Mega Newland. I know I'm getting, going to get hell for some right, this, this is the pronunciations. <laughs> the giant ticks. <laughs> after uh, the first is killed, uh, resulting in a cave in, forces retreat, the insects are believed killed. Shortly afterwards, a supersonic terror, which I thought that's just that's a badass name, right, <laughs> uh, is seen in the skies. Another prehistoric terror has awoken from the cave within. Yeah, you see the. Uh I see it hatch from its egg and everything too and it becomes like a whole like thing and it just makes me think of the dinosaurs cartoon just because the way is, uh, the, the creature looks Ichiro Honda yeah same, same guy director that, same, same guy that made all the guys all, all, a good yeah, chunk of the guys all movies. All, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, so this one came out with a little translation as Rodan monster of the sky yeah uh, Italian had Rodan the winged monster and I love Poland's <laughs> Poland has the best one Rodan Death bird. Death bird. <laughs> and I'm just like, man, that's fucking amazing, bro. This, these are some of my favorite parts of the show, just finding the uh, all of the international uh, titles. <laughs> yeah. And I will say, you know, uh, just go on uh, tohokingdom.com and you can look up all the information we're talking about. Uh, and if you go to the individual like movies, you can see the alternate posters. Mm-hmm. And some of them are just fantastic. There's, some of them are fucking terrible, like a, the a, Polish one. That's like a dinosaur. That's a fucking on dinosaur. On the fucking poster. Yeah. A there, badly drawn dinosaur. And there's also, the, there's one Rodin poster that I'm uh, recalling uh, from memory that kind of looks like a dragon more than a fucking pterodactyl. And I'm not, and I'm not sure. Uh, that might have been the flying monster uh, one. Yeah, the United he, States poster. Oh, that was the U.S. one. Yeah, the, he literally looks like some the head of a flightless dragon. Right. And it just has the exclamation point on it like, Rodan! It's now, like, Australia... I will say, the most sho- I love the tagline, the most shocking name in two million years. Rodan! More, startl- more startling than Jules Verne. What the f- All right. <laughs> and he has feathers. All right. like, I love these misleading fucking posters. Yeah, and it's a that dragon one, feathered monster. And that one has the exclamation point at the end of it, too. And to make him so big, it looks like he's literally grabbing a fucking jet out <laughs> of the skies, which I think is pretty impressive for only being i don't know 150 feet tall right <laughs> yeah i don't think that happens in the movie at all either no and if i recall rec- uh, correctly uh there's two rodans like it has a mate and then they uh mm-hmm. uh they both get killed in a fiery blaze at the end and you see the one or uh, one of the rodan creatures just kind of just you know being really stiff just kind of flopping itself to death somebody's just got its uh, wires just hollering just like kind of just moving around this stiff bird yeah. <laughs> in a pile of flames um this iteration of rodan has only appeared in two movies uh rodan the original movie and invasion of the astro monster however there is a rodan a second generation one that we're more familiar with yeah uh this one actually can bend the legs right yeah uh, the wingspan's a little bit carved out better but it looks, and this is the one we see in all the other movies and it looks a little bit goofier than and then uh it does mm-hmm. in this movie i honestly think the one uh in the this solo movie is probably the best looking suit because yep. in the uh like say the godzilla theme ones like when they fight Ghidorah, the three-headed monster there's it looks like uh, yeah. it has like a, a, a yellowish you know beak and that's all it does in these fucking movies it just pecks <laughs> That's all I can do. Yep. <laughs> Until you get like the second generation one, like uh, we were talking about earlier. Is just, and that's the one that appears in all the other movies. Yeah. Which, um, you know, that's the one with the King of Doras and the invasion yeah. of all monsters and all that shit. Destroy all monsters. Yeah. Rodan's always around to fight Ghidorah some, for some reason in all the uh, later uh, uh, show and, era Godzilla movies. 
and and a lot of these movies you'll see a lot of stock footage yeah constantly repeating uh like the one we we were just watching a movie what was it uh, it was the uh, godzilla versus Gigan. yeah and in that one we get a lot of stock footage of monster island technically it's like the giant spider the, mm-hmm. the other dinosaur i forget what it was it's stupid looking all, Crick, the one that looks like, like a giant praying mantis yeah and all it does was just kind of like a tail kick <laughs> yeah but yeah that's the thing about uh you know what happened later on in the 60s and 70s they could not get a budget together so they would just have to use stock footage from like all the 50s movies hmm. and the Geigen one in particular just has like just used Godzilla suits and just used Ghidorah suits and they just look god awful now um shortly after that um what was the next one after Rodan Let's see I guess the next big one uh well I guess not really big but uh the first use of like say a giant robot and the use of like uh space and robots in toho was the mysterians and that's more of like a a good guys versus bad guys you know buck rogers kind of deal but like the the most memorable thing about it is the uh, giant robot monster that looks like a bug with the drill for a nose (laughs) and uh oh man what is the robot's name it's uh it was used in uh, godzilla versus space godzilla as well but yeah, that's kind of like the uh, standout portion of like the movie poster, and to me, that's the most memorable thing about this movie is like the not only the costumes and the monster, but the fucking posters that came along with it too. Let me look that up. The Mysterians um, robots. Uh, Mogira. That's what it is. It's Mogira. You talking about the Mysterians from the, the solo movie, the nineteen fifty seven movie? Yeah, nineteen fifty seven. Yeah. So I'm mm-hmm. curious to see what the uh, alternate titles for that were. Yeah, Mogira was fucking terrible looking. <laughs> I don't know, man. Something about the the uh, design of it, at least on the movie poster, looked pretty cool. But if you see it in the fucking uh, in the movie, it looks ridiculous. Like it should be a fucking Power Rangers villain. But it had drills for hands and a drill for a nose, and didn't really do a whole lot of anything. And it, but that was like the giant kaiju beast that you know all the model tanks would shoot against and things like that too. All these variant covers look like some old sci-fi novels I have boxed up in my house. Yeah. Like 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 literally some See, like the United States. Let's get up on States. the mic a little bit. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, but like the the literal United States one is this. What so, the fuck? Let me see that real quick. Okay, so it's like a... Uh, some, some Buck Rogers. Exactly. Bullshit. Some dude with like a, a an egg-shaped helmet with mm-hmm. a no face attached to it and a cape hanging on to this damsel in distress wearing a red dress on some kind of platform in the middle of space. Yeah. With a fucking uh, spaceship uh, behind in the background and uh, some flying uh, asteroids. and All drawn, hand drawn. All hand drawn. It looks badass, but none yeah. of this is in the fucking movie. <laughs> yeah, it looks fucking ridiculous. And you, like I said, you can look all these up mm-hmm. on Toho Kingdom. I know. I like, uh, that's another thing about uh, all these movies too, is like all these, the posters and the art that's associated with them looks really fucking cool yeah. to me. Um, now the Mysterians, they came out in 1957. Yeah. And that uh, was now had to have been Toho's first venture into uh, space and robot creatures and things like that. Uh, I will say, um, <laughs> this one has no variant titles. No, <laughs> no, but it's still Ichiro Honda. Yeah. Dude worked his, like, I have no, I understand the movies don't look complicated, but, There's a formula and shit but like too. Printing out like three or four of these a year is fucking exhausting. Yeah, and like these are all like practical effects too, and you're building sets and you're getting all these models. I mean, this was like Toho, like with a budget too. Like in the fifties, they were just you know post Godzilla just oh, on the, fire. There, there is one variant title. Oh, you found it. <laughs> Guess what country? Germany. Yep. Was it, well, <laughs> it's always Germany with the wackiest titles. Phantom Seven Thousand. Hey, that's pretty badass. Phantom oh, so it's, it's 7,000. Like badass Blue Ocean Cold album. <laughs> right? <laughs> but yeah, The Mysterians, uh, I'd recommend that to anybody who's a fan of the genre or just was a fan of, you know, just Toho and their prime in general. See, I, 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 I don't know much about The Mysterians other than the constant alien aspect that they filter in through the rest of the Godzilla movies. Oh, yeah. And that's kind of like, uh, it's watching The Mysterians is kind of like watching, like, say, Barbarella or Star Crash or something like yeah. that. Like it's fun, it's dumb, but it's fun, you know. And it's kind of like a ni- ni- a nice little timepiece yeah. to watch, you know. And I'm a fan of like the uh, the art too. Yeah. So, if anyone was listening to some guys on the back, probably been like, "It's the Dune of great 
monster movies. Yes. <laughs> Speaking of that, that came out this week. I need, still need to watch that, and I'm still such a novice on the Dune lore anyway. Fuck you. I know it. Every- uh, I, I grew up with Frank Herbert, so. There you go. <laughs> but uh, going to the next one, after the Mysterians, what was next? The next big one, you had stuff in between, like, say, Varen, the Unbelievable, but that was mm-hmm. just kind of like uh, one of their... Uh, uh, clunkers. Now I got one here. It's uh, Angiris. Angiris that was, came out in 1955. Angiris was the uh, first villain that Godzilla fights in uh, Raids Again, and that's yeah. the uh, monster that we just saw in the uh, Gigan movie. Yeah. That's uh, Godzilla, who becomes Godzilla's sidekick. Yeah, the uh, he reminds me of uh, Razor from fucking uh, Ninja Turtles. Yes, <laughs> Toka and That's Razor. exactly what he is. <laughs> yeah, he's, he's fucking Razor. He doesn't do anything either except just kind of roll himself into a little spike ball and, uh, yeah. you know, kind of just uh, fly, hurl himself into enemies. But that's about it. And he's like the uh, one of the few uh, quadruped fucking uh, kaiju in yeah. all these movies too. I feel bad for the guy that had to be in that suit just kind of crawling all over the place. Like two midges. <laughs> two midges. Maybe. <laughs> Pulling like the... Uh, the horse, yeah. now, horse front end back end deal with him coming out. Um, and you and you briefly spoke about Varen. Uh, That's would, another quadruped uh, would, monster. Would Mothra be the next one? Mothra would be the next big one. Yeah, there's three treasures uh, in between that, but I've never saw that, and I have no idea what that about, what that is. You know what? Just for uh, you know, for the show's sake, let's do, let's learn something here. Why don't we? Uh, the three treasures. On the poster, it looks like uh, it's a very human-based story. And in the background, we've got a three, four-headed creature that looks kind of like a Ghidorah thing. There's not really a uh, a plot description or anything like that. But I have never heard anything about this movie. So we might have to do like a... I mean, I, I think uh, with this uh, this episode, we're kind of covering like all like the the big... The bigger, more famous yeah. creatures, but you know, I'll do some more research on that, and we probably might we might do an episode on like all of the lesser yeah. creatures from this era too. Now, what's cool about Mothra? It's two creatures. It starts off as a larva, and then it goes into a moth. Yeah, and that's kind of been the uh, consistent thing about uh, the whole yeah. Mothra series too, because like the Mothra larva, you know, has powers too, even if it's only just shooting webs at uh at its enemies and stuff too, but uh. That's probably, I would say Mothra is probably like the second most famous Toho monster oh, outside yeah. of Godzilla by far. Now, like, Ichiro Honda, again, you know, still cramming him out. Mm-hmm. Um, and what's funny is, like, I guess he'd be like the Kevin Feige of... Yeah, of the, Toho. The, of Toho <laughs> because he's he, he's always in the background doing something else. Yeah, basically. But the original, I, don't, I haven't seen another poster that beat the original, you know, Japanese... Oh yeah, that massive looks- Japanese calligraphy and just giant Mothra from the sky and giant larva. You know, looks like he's just ripping a fucking radio tower in half. Yeah, and they incorporate the twins, and this is like a constant throughout the series. And I think with uh, the Mothra, is it this one where it's uh, all based off of like uh, the uh, uh, a piece of shit villain uh, character uh, trying to capitalize, trying to like tear down, you know? Uh, a rainforest to build like some kind of like conglomerate deal. There's always an environmentalist thing with the, with the Mothra movies. Also, I, I hate doing this in the middle of the show and stuff like that, but you might need to turn your mic up on the uh, device that's there. Me. Yeah, that's on me. Yeah, um, it's all good. But um, there we go. Uh, we can edit that out and post. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, Mothra's, uh, but yeah, that's the constant in all the Mothra movies too. You got the little singing, uh, we always call them like the Mothra twins. Yeah, they always have a name, but I can never remember the names, and it's always different in every fucking. Oh movie yeah, too. And especially the island. Mm-hmm. At first, it's Infant Island. Infant Island. That's the first thing I thought it's of. Like Monster Island. Yeah, and it always fucking changes. Uh, this one started off with a shipwreck. Remember? Yeah. And the survivors land on the island, and they realize, holy shit, there's little deity people. Mm-hmm. Which I kind of like. If you watch Kong Skull Island, there's a small reference to the little people. Mm-hmm. Um. When they go into John C. Riley, he's leading the team into that area, and you see how the rocks like move, and it makes the face of Godzilla, and then it makes the face of the Death Eaters or whatever the fuck they're called. Yeah, but uh, Skull Crawlers, that's Skull Crawlers, I, those were cool. That was that was probably my favorite of the uh, the new movies that came yeah. out. Is probably Skull Island. But you see like these two little pillars, and they got reefs around their necks and stuff in the movie, mm-hmm. and uh, it's the the Mothra twins, yeah, the Mothra twins. But uh, the Asian girl in the film, 
Mm-hmm. There's a deleted scene, and uh, she's with uh, the dude that played uh, Dr. Dre. Oh, fuck. What is... I know you're talking but, you about, know, too. He's with Dr. He plays Dr. No, it Dre. Was, uh, no, it was uh, Ice Cube's son. It was uh, O'Shea Jackson no, Jr. No, no, no. It was the guy that played Dr. Dre from Straight Outta Compton. He was in it. Which one had the Ice Cube one? Anyway, but yeah. Anyway, straight Outta Compton. That was Godzilla. That was Godzilla. He was a soldier. Oh, okay. That's what I'm thinking of. But yeah. uh, back in like the 60s, uh, late 60s, 70s, uh, in the Kong Skull Island movie. Okay. He's in it. And she makes a mention in a deleted scene. Oh, hey, yeah, those, those are my, that's my mom and her sister, and they're twins. Yeah, and that plays that plays into the whole newer movies, yeah. too. Because she's in the uh, one with uh, Ghidorah and uh, Mothra and Rodan, and one of the new ones too. Like mm-hmm. she shows up, and she's kind of like the uh, the representation of that monarch uh, of that yeah, exactly of that lore from yeah. the Mothra series as well. And this one is uh, you know 1961 uh, American release. Mm-hmm. Uh, straight up Mothra. Yeah. Or in German, Mothra threatens the world. <laughs> <laughs> Even though Mothra's like the hero character. Yeah. That's another thing, too. I think Mothra was like the first uh, monster. Well, it's not the first time Germany got who the bad guys were. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, got that wrong. <laughs> but no, with uh, Mothra, I think that was the first like hero creature in the series, too. Or like more yeah. of like a, the sympathetic character. You know, it yeah. looks like a giant, still looks like just a giant plush it's a, it's a uh, creature. It is. It's just a giant plush creature. But like these early eras, of, these early incarnations of Mothra, are, to me, are probably some of the better looking ones because they make the flight dynamics look mm-hmm. a little bit better than they would later on when, again, flying creatures just got more stiff as they went along. You know, as I went back and watched some of the old one-offs, you know how like there's like two larvae in an egg? Yeah. But there's only one fucking Mothra. I know, right? <laughs> Why is there another one not running around somewhere? We never see one with like the two Mothras. I'm assuming one eats the other one. <laughs> right. Yeah. <laughs> so, biology rules, I guess. Yeah, biology rules. <laughs> Some nasty fucking nature out there. Well, speaking of Skull Island, it'd be, uh, we'd be remiss if we didn't bring up uh, Toho's version of King Kong. Yes. Uh, very impressive. Uh, I mean, impressive in a way where it's like... Uh, it's terrible. It's yeah, <laughs> impressively awful in a lot of ways. Yeah. But because uh, it doesn't have ears, it's the face The face uh, mask just kind of looks like it just looks uh, like a Captain Caveman or some shit, <laughs> you know? Well, it's... It seems like it's like a backhanded, like throw down against Americans like kaiju you know what I'm saying and right but this one does look like some Planet of the Apes knockoff it does and it got used in another movie too it got used in a movie called uh, Kong Escapes which was like the one solo uh, King Kong movie that Toho put out and he even got his own uh, nemesis his own uh, robot nemesis which was Mechanicong Yes, Mechanic Kong was a separate movie too. Yeah, and that was before even uh, Godzilla versus Mecha Godzilla. There was, um, other... but uh, going back to uh, King Kong, he's actually immune from all the weapons they use against King Kong, or not against Godzilla. Yeah. So like the uh, X weapon they well, use, he's immune to it, right? Which I think is hilarious. And he would like generate uh, electricity, or he would like grab, uh, you know power cables and uh power lines and you know just gain electric electric power from those for whatever reason that's the thing about all these movies too they would just uh gain new powers just out of plot convenience even if it made no sense whatsoever yeah it's just fucking stupid yeah uh and like uh, uh, the whole grabbing and godzilla by the tail and swinging them and shit oh yeah which that- is always funny Oh, yeah, and that whole movie, that's just full-on just pro-wrestling like a motherfucker, too. Mm -hmm. And he was only brought in, uh, like, the idea of King Kong versus Godzilla was, like, such a cash grab, too. And it was a successful cash grab at that. And that was, like, uh, from, well, shit, from 62 uh, to 62 from 1955, that was the first Godzilla appearance in quite some time, too. Yeah. And they kind of pulled the whole King Kong storyline, at least for the first half, uh, on a... On an expedition to Mondo Island, yeah. another infant island, um, the submarine explorer makes a startling discovery: a giant ape called King Kong living amidst the land that time forgot. That's what I love—the land that time forgot. I know. So it's- this is like throwaway line from a Jules Verne novel. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. That became a movie too. With uh, mm-hmm. what, oh, what what is the this land head? that time forgot? Yeah, became- land, there was land before time. There was land before time, and then there was a land that time forgot with uh, the guy from. Uh, at the Earth's core, who had a bu- that had a yeah. other bunch of other uh, rubber dinosaurs mm-hmm. costume suits, and then you had uh, the show. There was a television show 
called Land of the Lost. Yeah. And they remade it twice. And then the the King Kong uh, lore in the uh, in this movie in particular with Godzilla, he's on that land that time forgot, fighting fighting an, a giant octopus, yeah. which is like a real octopus too. It's just like it's you know the guy away. in the suit just throwing around a live octopus. <laughs> Fuck it, why not? Why not? <laughs> which I, I love what they do in the Kong Skull Island because he does kill a giant octopus and eat it. Yeah, <laughs> and he just like rips that motherfucker to pieces and just like damn, that is fucking rough to watch. He goes like, here's my lunch. Here we yep. go. <laughs> but this one also uh, one of his. It, so another the Italians this time King Kong the giant of the forest <laughs> alright just what the fuck and Ichiro Honda had this one too yep uh, I'm just gonna stop saying his name and just be like I'm just gonna right. assume that he's directing all it's these fucking movies it's a surprise look <laughs> was that the only other uh, were those the only other titles um, yes uh, another one is King Kong's Counterattack, which is like the literal translation right but this one actually just it, it's pretty bland. There's a Mechanic Kong, uh, Gor- Gorosaurus, which is the di- which is like the, the dinosaur. Uh, yeah, that's the dinosaur that we uh, were making fun of earlier. That did all the uh, the tail kicks and all that. Yeah, kangaroo kick. Yes. Kangaroo kick, and it's only it only happens once in like the destroy all monsters battle where it's just kind of like you know where they're all just ganging up on King Ghidorah and fucking Gorosaurus just like you know does that kangaroo kick. <laughs> I want to see the uh, mechanics of the guy in the suit doing that. <laughs> He's probably got a stool. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but yeah, after uh, King Kong versus Godzilla, we get a couple of uh, more space uh, themed movies from Toho. One's called Goroth, and one's called Atragon. And I know nothing about those. You know, that's just, you know, I mean, I'm sure that, this, again, the posters look pretty spectacular, and I'm sure the movies are a fun watch for any completionist Toho fans out there, but still. Um, uh, then we get Mothra fighting Godzilla, and that kind of expands the Mothra lore a little bit more. Yeah. Uh, we do have uh, Baragon. He got uh, his own film. Barag- Where did we see Baragon? Frankenstein versus Baragon, oh, 1965. Got, gotcha. Got, oh, okay. So we're kind of, uh, yeah, we're skipping uh, the Ghidorah stuff. We're skipping the Mon... Uh, yeah, because it's, like, it's mainly Godzilla stuff leading up to uh, this one. And this is... I thought this movie is interesting. This one in particular is really interesting. Baragon versus uh, Frankenstein. Yeah. And the uh, I think the American uh, release was called just Frankenstein Conquers the World. And yes, Frankenstein, uh, is literalist. They yeah. call the it's they call the monster Frankenstein because whatever the fuck, you know. <laughs> but no, this one's uh, I like the uh, the Fra- damn- <laughs> <laughs> You're sitting there going like, God damn it, <laughs> Frankenstein versus the subterranean monster. <laughs> Frankenstein, the fright with the monkey face. That's what uh, what company put the, or what country uh, had that. Germany? Yep. Of course. (laughs) Because you know why? This movie's about Nazis. (laughs) (laughs) Or just scientists. uh, Scientists doing, uh, you know, terrible experiments, you know. Like Germany. This this might as well just say Germany is best Germany. (laughs) (laughs) But no, Frankenstein versus, uh, or Baragon or Frankenstein Conquers the World is interesting because it's it's just a, a human actor, you know, fighting a guy in a rubber suit when it comes to that battle. And I don't know, that kind of makes it look like one of the better fight scenes in any, you know, monster movie just because you know the realistic you know f- human actions kind of give a little bit you know more of like a a fun take to watch or a fun perspective to watch because you see a guy with the, you, actually using his uh, his arms and hands and not sped up or yeah. slowed down or anything like that it doesn't look you know robotic or mechanic or like a limited well the Frankenstein was like a guy yeah exactly because like because it's a guy he's got more uh, mobility yeah. to do uh, you know to kind of accent these fight scenes and the Baragon creature is kind of like a uh, it's like a turtle puppy reptile looking it's, thing yeah, it's, got a, it's, got, it's got a like a rhino horn coming out of its instead of its nose now it comes out like right between the eyes yeah. it's a horn that comes out it's very funny looking and it doesn't have like a, a superpower or anything like that he well, just, he's got like a heat ray he shoots out of his mouth oh is that what it was so I couldn't I couldn't remember that because he didn't really utilize that in say, uh, like a Godzilla uh, in the Godzilla movie that came out in the early 2000s, which we'll get into in another episode. Yeah, he's but, badass looking though. I like it. I think it's one of the uh, one of the uh, one of the uh, underrated looking uh, monsters in the Toho universe yeah. for sure. Yeah, like a arachnid. Yeah, and uh, he's there's a version of Baragon that's uh, used in the Gamera universe that looks completely different in yeah. 
He has like one of the weirdest superpowers ever. And I would I can't wait till we do a gamma episode where we just oh, like yeah. cover the absurdity of the creatures they use in those movies. Like the Baragon in the Gamera movie uh, shoots rainbows out of his back. <laughs> Fuck it, why not? Fuck it, why not? But yeah, that was the uh that's one of two movies that uh kind of feature a more uh, humanist humanoid looking car- uh monsters because then after that we've got Ibra Horror of the Deep which we've co- covered in uh, one of our earlier Godzilla themed uh, episodes and then it, they, t- they talk about oh, that one's on HBO Max too it is and they talk about this movie being a sequel to Frankenstein versus Baragon but there's really like hardly any continuity in it mm-hmm. of course I'm talking about War of the Gargantuas but it's two humanoid looking creatures uh, fighting each other over, uh, I guess, uh, a fam- uh, an ancient, you know, uh, prophecy over like their uh, family, uh, 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 you know, uh, what what is the uh, phrase that I am looking for over, uh, you know, over things that move plots along. I need to I haven't watched this in a long time, but uh, yeah, I like the monster uh, fight scenes in this movie too because again, more uh, human realistic looking uh, human mobility kind of fight scenes. Yeah. Um, well, going back a little bit, um, we accidentally skipped over it, but Ghidorah, the three-headed monster. Yeah, we we did. But yeah, Ghidorah is probably like uh, outside of uh, Godzilla and Mothra. Ghidorah is definitely uh, probably the most famous Godzilla foe in the Toho yeah. universe. You know, three-headed dragon that shoots you know lightning beams out of its all three of its mouths. You know, how cool is that? And this one, he came from space. Yes. He's got like his origin stories just kind of run all over the place. Yeah. Um, and you know, this is like, you could argue this is the first like destroy all monsters. Like, yeah. You know, try out, you know what I'm saying? Because you know, you got the big four, you got Mothra, Rodan, Ghidorah, and Godzilla. Mm-hmm. And they're all, it's a free for all really for a little while until they all try to kill Ghidorah. Yeah. And that's like a, kind of like their uh, Toho's all stars mm-hmm. at this point. You have successful movies with Rodan, with Mothra, with Godzilla, of course. And then, uh, yeah, with Ghidorah, that's just like, uh, it's always, like, because it's always, you know, three against one with Ghidorah. Ghidorah is so powerful that it mm-hmm. takes more than just Godzilla to take, to take him on. Mm-hmm. I, think, what, I think what kind of, he doesn't ruin it, but I do think it's funny is uh, he doesn't have arms. No. <laughs> he's yeah. got those big, old, he's just got those big wings. I mean, yeah. He has two tails that he doesn't utilize at all either. No, and you rarely see the two tails. Uh, they only, I think, I only saw the one tail in the one we was watching, but uh, and that one was terrible. Yeah, yeah, he makes appearances because the wings look like they're made of fabric. I know it. That's the thing too. It's like uh, we keep referencing Godzilla versus Gigan a lot, just because we watched this before we put it on. But uh, that had to have been like the same Ghidorah suit from like you know movies that were like five years prior or something like that (laughs) yeah this one uh you know 1964 you know still you know turning them out like marvel movies you know basically three or four a year we don't give a shit um sure honda i I presume (laughs) uh this one uh three giant monsters the greatest battle on earth is the literal translation all right (laughs) um Ghidorah the three-headed monster you know got the u.s release uh, pretty much all across the world, except for Germany. Of course. <laughs> Our friends in Germany. Uh, Frankenstein's monster fights against King Ghidorah. <sighs> this is even before the Frankenstein uh, Conquers yeah. the World movie comes out. <laughs> yeah. I was like, I remember that being a thing like on our previous uh, Godzilla movies where like Frankenstein is used a lot in all the German releases, which I don't understand. But uh, yeah, Ghidorah is used in, uh, let's see... Three-headed monster. He's in the follow-up movie, Invasion of the Astro Monster. Now, here, here, here's some like facts I love about this. Okay, he's about 100 meters tall, so about 300 feet. Right. Rodan is about 150 meters tall. Right. So you're talking about Rodan's a lot bigger than him, but every time we see Rodan, he's smaller. Yeah, exactly. And um, I think the wingspan is also very uh, deceptive yeah. too. Yeah. Uh, he can fly at Mach three. Yeah. But space travel, Mach four hundred. Okay. So let me give you let me give you an example. A F sixteen, what you know, Tomcat, which is an older military plane, can hit Mach three no problem. Yeah. If you go faster than Mach ten, 
shit starts flying off the ground. Yeah. Like, literally, you're pulling something up from the ground by force. So, I imagine if you go on Mach 400, shit catches fire once you fly over it, which I think is hilarious, like, the physics of it. Even, um, even though in the movie, it looks like he's going, like, 10 miles an hour yeah. with the fucking... Uh, <laughs> Barely that. He looks like they're probably like throwing rocks at him to make it look like he's going past that shit. Faster. Right. <laughs> um, he's got the gravity beams. Yeah, those, which, those little which, lightning bolts. Yeah. Hurricane winds from the... Uh, from the Mach 20 or whatever yeah, the fuck. The, yeah. <laughs> and uh, the meteor transformation where he can make meteors fall from the sky. Yeah, he's pro- always projected as like a a, a space, uh, you know, terror or whatever, yeah. too. I love what they did with the King of All Monsters movie. Just like the sheer just power of it mm-hmm. was so good. Yeah, but the visuals and they actually made it look like uh, there. You see the consequences of like creatures like this actually being in a time and place like this, and not look fucking goofy as shit like you see yeah. an earnest take on it. Yeah. Even yeah. though the, even though at its core, like you know, all these movies have like silly plot lines that just move along. Uh, you know, uh, to monster fights and stuff like that. It's hard to write a storyline, uh, a human storyline that kind of uh, you know captures your interest as much as you and know. Then, yeah, but yeah, that goes with a lot of kaiju movies too. Yeah, yeah. Unless you have like a kid plot, I don't. The kid plot all, always ruins it. Yeah, the kid plot can potentially ruin it, can, especially in some of these uh, later Godzilla movies, like say Son of Godzilla or like uh, Godzilla's Revenge, where we get the cannies, which we've talked about in other episodes too. Yeah. Um, but uh, King Ghidorah, you know, is just one of the big ones. Like I said earlier, the big four. Yeah. Um, and I think he is probably one of the most recognizable Toho, other than Godzilla. Yeah. I think he's the you know first one someone says when you say, "Hey, when you think of kaiju movies and not Godzilla, what do you think of?" Yeah. When you picture Godzilla fighting somebody, it's usually King Ghidorah. Yeah. And he gets used like over and over again throughout the decades, mm-hmm. even as. You know, as recent as, you know, just a few years ago with King of the Monsters. Yeah. Then we got, uh, let's see, he appears again in Invasion of the Astro Monster. And then uh, we, and then there's another Godzilla movie, Ever a Horror of the Deep, where he fights the sea monster. And then we get Son of Godzilla. And then King Kong escapes. And then we get Destroy All Monsters. And then uh, we get All Monsters Attack. Then it becomes very Godzilla heavy throughout Toho yeah. from like the 60s on. Yeah, and you get um, only a handful of other like uh, monster movies that don't go anywhere, like uh, Space Amoeba. Yeah, <laughs> this fucking thing. Let me pull that up. And that's like such a weird looking creature, too. It's like a mollusk. Yeah. Yeah, that's like one of those. Uh, Toho uh, one-offs like you were talking about that just kind of uh, you know didn't really go anywhere and I never saw it I never watched anything about it either but I'm looking at the uh, the poster and it looks like there's a Gamera uh, kind of looking creature and there's a lobster looking creature on the uh, the poster as well too so that's be that would be uh, one that I would like to do an episode on on our uh, lesser uh, monsters from uh, Toho's uh, catalog as well but as far as you know godzilla foes from the late 60s on what are some of like the most memorable to you other than king Ghidorah, probably uh and gyrus but, yeah. but we don't see him till like raids again i think see raids again was his first one then i think his follow-up is uh destroy all monsters yeah and you know this, you know Toho, you know didn't just do you know kaiju movies. They're known for the kaiju movies, but you know this is a film company that started in 1933. Yeah, and has been kicking out at least two movies, almost four movies per year. Mm-hmm. Hell, in 1937 alone, they produced like nine. And what were all those? Uh- what were those mostly about if they weren't giant monster movies? Uh, just regular, uh, what we consider just popcorn flicks. Really? Straight to, straight to, you know, theaters. And you gotta remember like, and here's where the history kicks in. Yeah. Okay. So around in the thirties in Japan, um, they are dealing with a economic struggle. Of course. With China. Which isn't what we think of China as now. Right. But also the Russians. Mm-hmm. Okay, because the Russians are 
are in turmoil. They're you know dealing with the aftermath of a civil war in the twenties. Exactly. Um, and what people don't, I don't think people realize is Russia is like three different fucking countries in one. Right. There's a large uh, Asian community in Russia. It's not just a bunch of white assholes. I was about to ask if like the fall of the Romanov dynasty had anything to do with yeah, the, which you know that's you know the early 1900s, right? Like 1910s. Oh, okay. Uh, so you got a country that's moving from like an aristocracy to an actual economic power, but still throwing its civil war across all of the nation. Yeah. But they're also dealing with Japan. Japan, the Jap, uh, the Russo-Japanese War, mm-hmm. uh, the fight for the Sea of Japan. Uh, Korea is becoming a rising uh, structure. Um, communism isn't quite there yet. Um, it's not what we know it as now. Right. But, you know, China is still a very poor nation. All the other sovereign nations there are not unified under anyone. Uh, but Japan is a very America too type country. <laughs> uh, not even just now, but back then. Um, they, you know... Up until like the 1890s, they were still a feudal, feudal country. Yeah, which had masters and servants and fiefdoms, and they still have an emperor. Yeah, they still have a mm-hmm. a god they can touch. And it was, and they kind of like had that you know mindset until the end of World War Two. Yes, uh, they still technically have a an aristocracy, but it's not like Britain is. Right, it's more for show. They have a prime minister. Which funny story is uh, there's a girl who won in the Olympics, a gymnast, and she uh, won the gold. And her parents told her if she won the gold, she could get a dog. And you <laughs> see her with a gold, and she's kind of like got this half little smirk. But then the prime minister of Japan hands her a fucking like Japanese bred dog, oh, wow. which is like the national dog. Yeah. And hands it to her, and she's more happy about the fucking dog. Oh, <laughs> the, but, that's uh, so sweet. <laughs> but you know. And they're still kicking movies out during World War Two. At the height of like their yeah, so, involvement in the war. Well, I guess the US was too. So like December seventh, nineteen forty one, Pearl Harbor happens. Nineteen forty two, war at sea from Hawaii to Malaya, which is a propaganda film. Toho puts this out? Yeah. <laughs> because they have to, you know, it's a Japanese company. Yeah. We put out pro Fucking propaganda films, too. Of course. Donald Duck joins the fucking Navy. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah, um, the Three Stooges, uh, you know. Kill the Emperor of Japan. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but even after, you know, they're still going strong after World War II, uh, especially in 1945. And you're think, thinking about this. A whole country has just been nuked twice. Yeah. This studio puts out five movies in that year alone. Yeah. And also, you know, after you know, after all this happens, and you know, after uh, you know, things start to recover and things start to pull back up, you know, their economy starts to get, you know, come uh, come back, and they're just ready to work, and they're ready to, you know, just expand and you know, put out their next big thing as well. And that's kind of what the uh, theme of a lot of these movies was too. Just kind of uh, they would poke. A lot of Toho movies, especially with the monster movies, would poke fun at you know folks trying to take advantage of like the stem- of the uh, you know rising economy at the times, and you know yeah. kind of poke fun at you know the billionaires, much like you know what American movies do now. Well, um, there's a movie called Those Who Make Tomorrow, which is a 1946 film from Toho, and it's a pro-union movie. Okay, it's a very pro-union movie. It's about occupied Japan by Americans. Oh wow! <laughs> and uh, the Americans are rarely seen in the movie, but it's still an occupied country yeah and i think people don't realize what that means to occupy another country uh just imagine someone who doesn't look like you speak your language is the dominant force in your area oh, for okay. a good while because your country lost and america's never suffered that kind of thing right to an ex- to the level that others have by our hand right but but, um, but Toho kind of used that as a th- plot yeah, point. Yeah, they, for... they use it as a backdrop. Yeah. Um, That's interesting, though. Yeah. So, you know, just the history of Japan is fascinating. Especially with pop culture. Would you uh, argue that uh, I could be out of, out of uh, line here? Well, I don't know. I don't know at the top of my head. But outside of America, as far as like having, a, I would say, America's biggest export is our pop culture, whether it be... Yeah. 
art, the arts and stuff like that. Would you say Japan is like number two in that regard? I would say China and Japan together. Just okay. Because uh, Japan, Japan is so technologically advanced with us. Yeah. Um, and it's a whole different, you know, it's a whole different culture over there. And, you know, with every country, there is a separate culture, except for the United States. Canada, to the same extent. Uh, but an American culture, as I see, is from Mexico to Canada and everywhere in between. Um, there is a very lost culture thing. Well, it's because it's because, varying cultures. Because, yeah, because it's all together. Yeah. So one's not singled out over the other. Exactly. You know, we grew up in the American South. Which is way different than... So, so black and white culture are mixed together. Right. And there are sharp divides. And I know we're getting kind of serious about oh, I know fucking it, kaiju. <laughs> uh, but no, it, it works well with the movies, too, because um, in those movies, it's something that's scary. Yeah. And in 1940s, 50s, Japan, they're worried about consequence from nuclear fallout. Right. They have a whole, they created a whole subculture of people that they feared were, and they were survivors of the atomic bomb. Like, they felt that people who survived the nuclear blast in Japan were cursed to an extent. And I'm sure and culturally, if you think about that, you know, we think about POWs, we think about veterans, you know, we have, we put them in very high regard mm-hmm. on a social level. But imagine if we did that to them. Oh, right. no, this guy survived Afghanistan. He's cursed. Yeah, it's a very I'm not and I'm not judging the culture about them. It's just like, a, but it's just, but it is a that very happened. yeah, because it's fucking scary. You yeah. Know? Science was let loose on you and at at the highest level and of destruction twi- too twice twice yeah yeah and imagine like uh, the survivors guild that uh, yeah. some of those folks carry with them as well and I think you can see that in a lot of these movies um, particularly in the uh, older Godzilla yeah. movies and you know stopping right here in the seventies is a good stopping point because Japan has a whole new cultural revolution in the seventies and eighties. Uh, that you really see in the movies and you actually see in the techniques of the way the movie's filmed yeah you know uh, you get a lot of broader shots you know the scenery's a little bit more polished Mm -hmm. and uh, we see that in American movies too but a lot of American culture is pulled in you know you see a lot of people with uh, cars fashion they start you know you see American 60s in Japan you know what I'm saying especially style wise yeah because people forget like Countries like Japan, Korea, Iran, um, Turkey, you know, before before the latter two had their cultural revolutions, they they were little Americas. Yeah. Okay, so like you could see a girl in the United States dressed a certain way, go to Japan, see that exact same shit, same time of day. Yeah. And if you think about it, that's kind of wild. And now we're kind of seeing it in reverse, where like uh, there's yeah. a lot of American culture that's you know embracing Japanese culture mm-hmm. and you know dressing like how they see you know. Well, uh, I just that it's just you know a lot of his, a lot of those same countries have regressed. Instead of moving forward, they've taken three steps back. Like, yeah. Especially uh, Iran. Yeah. And uh, Turkey, you know, they're going back to a more religious conservative look, but Japan also has some of the weirdest problem socially i think it's funny i think where they yeah. don't have enough guys to marry the women yeah which i think is just fucking hilarious you're telling me there's in a population it's not all women i know right. it's not all women but you're telling me these women can't get married well it's like you're on a it's like the uh the whole thing of like you've heard the whole like i guess myth or whatever it's like if you stack everybody in uh japan on one side of the uh, earth you know it would tilt the uh global axis or whatever mm-hmm. as to far as far as how many people are like you know living in the you know co- the country of japan about how overcrowded it is mm-hmm. so hearing stats like that blows my mind still yeah um, <laughs> it's like the male to female ratio i don't know i just think it's funny and you know 
since I will say since 1947, they are one of our best allies. Yeah, but I think we'd be remiss uh, if we didn't uh, mention Ultraman too. Speaking of like uh, Ultraman, yeah, that's, the, that's where the Power Rangers knocked off all their shit. Exactly, kind of. This is in the 70s too, where it uh, started like getting less serious. And I mean, you said you wanted to kind of like uh, maybe we could do a Toho Part Two. Oh, no, there. we can do part two, three, four, five. I don't give a oh, shit. Oh, yeah, because like in the, in the late 60s, early 70s, Toho kind of, you know, starts out a little bit. The serious tone is gone from the mm-hmm. uh, the monster movies, and they're starting to have more fun and uh, promote to little kids and things like that. And I think that's across the board with most uh, Japanese cinema, including mm-hmm. with like, you know, the Gamera movies and all that, too. Um, And a little of America... Uh, a lot of American and European culture kind of, well, not just culture, but ideas flow into Japan in the 70s. Yeah. Um, because a lot of it's, you know, economic building moving forward mm-hmm. for them, what they see it as. Yeah. This and, is like 20 plus years after the war and everything, yeah, too. Yeah, almost 30, yeah. Yeah. So, like, going into the 70s, you know, that's when we get the Godzilla versus Gigan. Yeah. And, you know, take the Gigan creature and how much different it looks from what you think a practical monster would look like. Yeah. Yeah. And, so and it just gets just so over the top with like blades and knives yeah. and uh, the it giant looks, red eye. It looks very, ro- again, very robotic. There. It looks like someone trying to put a metal chicken into a lizard. Yes. <laughs> with like a fucking uh, beer gut <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> with a blade yeah, attached he, to he it. He doesn't do sit ups. <laughs> what's your favorite? What's your. Uh, favorite monster from uh this era of uh toho like say from the uh 50s to the late 60s man i gotta say uh probably rodan just because of the simplicity of it I, um yeah like i don't like i like king Ghidorah, but the fact that he doesn't have he doesn't have arms always bothered me <laughs> really <laughs> yeah it's just weird because i think he'd be more terrifying if he had like just some little arms yeah, or like if it was like a, more like a. Like it's also a, like that Mandela effect. You know, like you see a T Rex, mm-hmm. and it's like, oh, he's got tiny little arms. It's like Kikidora can have those. Yeah, or like it could have been like a real dragon and be like a quadruped with like you mm-hmm. know fucking uh, you know. It'd be like, like one of those a real weird, dragon or you know, the Japanese flightless dragons. Ooh, yeah. Or the, the ones that fly in the air but don't have wings because European dragons have wings, Japanese dragons don't. Yeah, they're almost like uh, serpent like. Yeah. That's kind of like what the uh, that's kind of what uh, Ghidorah always reminded me of. Just like three Japanese, you know, serpent dragons mm-hmm. just kind of rolled into one. Yeah. I don't know. That's just a classic look to me. And I guess if I had to choose one, it would be uh, King Ghidorah for yeah. me. Yeah, that I had that toy growing up, the old King Ghidorah toy. I did, I did too. Uh, I didn't have the Rodan, um, but like I said, it's just it's one of those. Uh, like dinosaur toys you had as a kid. Exactly. And it was always mixed with them. <laughs> mm-hmm. And that's always like, you know, that's why I got into this stuff when I was a kid too, because yeah. I was into dinosaurs and stuff like that Every too. little boy's into fucking dinosaurs. Little girl, little boy, doesn't matter. Yeah. I still, and I still do to an extent. I still, I could still probably, uh, you know. Name off all the dinosaurs you learned as oh, a kid. Oh yeah, exactly. If we watched Jurassic Park right now, I'd be like, oh, okay, that's a Dilophosaurus. So that's a Pachycephalosaurus. I'd name all the motherfucking dinosaurs in Jurassic Park 3. <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah. I was like, a Spinosaurus. God damn. That's what I liked about the new Jurassic Park. Uh, going to the new Jurassic Park, it's like, oh, this is the Verizon Saurus. <laughs> the Verizon. Yeah, because really. We're just, like, just we're making just, up fucking dinosaurs we're and just, shit like, like we're that. Just, we're not just that. They're company bought and owned. <laughs> this is the new dinosaur Jurassic World, sponsored by Verizon. Yeah. <laughs> or this is the new quadruped deadliest creature they've come out of Jurassic Port with genetics brought to you by Pepsi please yeah <laughs> Gatorade <laughs> oh EA would be just an unfinished dinosaur that you have to pay extra to see what it looks like god that's the that'd be the scary Jurassic Park I want to yeah. see yeah. <laughs> just cor- <laughs> corporate Corporatosaurus <laughs> and I do love like we know we these are campy movies and they're just they are silly mm-hmm. you know they are giant monster movies and I think that's what makes it so much more fun because when you're little you're in awe yeah your imagination runs wild like, with it you know we did the whole um and it'll be released uh on halloween or no the tuesday after halloween but the watch along we did mm-hmm. when i was a kid watching the amazing colossal man that is that was a highlight mm-hmm. along with the other kaiju movies my grandpa owned at the time which was uh Attack of Mechagodzilla, uh, King Kong, mm-hmm. uh, the Mechagodzilla, 
and that whole thing of bigger than imagination exactly you know a world threatened by and it's just like it's a fucking 50 foot man yeah what the fuck's he gonna do he's gonna step on you yeah but like even with godzilla you know it's he's not super fast no you know uh it's not like king kong you know karate or some shit right you know (laughs) it's just a giant behemoth of a creature that you know is gonna destroy everything it walks on and that's the most terrorizing thing and holy shit it can breathe fire you know that's you know you're not gonna take that down it's like that ever present well it's that allegory for its original idea which is you know the result of you know a world where nuclear power can run amok or run amok you know and there's no way to stop it yeah and you know the atomic age lasts for so long because of the united states and russia uh, that Jap- Japan kind of suffers more yeah. later on because of uh, all the bombings, test bombings we do on like the border of Mexico and the atoll islands between you know here, Hawaii, and you know Southeast Asia. Mm-hmm. Uh, we've wiped out total fucking nations. Yep, um, just for testing. And I could imagine you know in the back of your mind of pseudoscience thinking like. What if? What if? Yeah. What if this iguana turned into, I don't know, a hundred and thirty meter long fucking animal who that fucking we can't, ate people that we can't that with uh, no uh, solution around other than you know another nuclear bomb. And that's what you know Godzilla truly is. It's just a giant fucking sea iguana. I don't know if you've ever seen a sea iguana. Mm-hmm. They're very weird looking. Yeah. Uh, but all the other monsters, you know, they're just it's a bird. It's a it's an insect. Yeah, it's an insect. It's a spider. It's a praying mantis. It's a, literally a dinosaur. It, it's always a giant something. Something. Yeah. Yeah. And I think that will always be fascinating to like to kids to us because you know it's larger than life. Yeah. Uh, like in Australia, you know, we think of spiders as being like the size of quarters. Over there, they're the size of like my hands put together. Right. And they just they're just casually there. Yeah. It's like rats in New York. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, I think I think one of the weirdest ones I ever saw was a uh, Australian uh, stone crab. Australian snow crab. No, stone stone uh, rock, crab. Rock, uh, rock crabs or some shit. Let me look that. Anyway, up. these things are fucking massive, and it's just like uh, Australia. You get scarier every day. <laughs> I think they've done uh, giant crabs in like say uh, Ebra yeah. and shit like that, or like at least the King Kong movie. Yeah, but it's like giant crabs in Australia or some shit, and they're just super fucking massive. Let's see here. Let me look at images. Hairy stone crabs. Where's no. a size comparison image that I can see? But like, oh my God! Yeah, you're right. <laughs> Jesus. And yeah, here's a Tasmanian giant crab. That's like looks like this on the uh, next to the scientist right here. I know, listeners. You have to Google the uh, the Tasmanian uh, giant crab. These things are fucking <laughs> terrifying. The giant crab spider. That's what it was. Giant that. crab spider. Jesus Christ. Yeah. yeah Anything look that in Australian, up. you're going to hear that response. Jesus Christ. God, kaiju are real, folks. <laughs> yeah. But, like, can you imagine if that was Ibera from the deep? Yeah. You know, because they've been around for so long, and I could imagine this is the inspiration for them. Like, well, That's the thing, too, about some of these monsters. Like, if it's a giant mantis or a giant ape or whatever, these are familiar creatures that, you know, are that you know strike fear and the and those that you know are scared of this kind of thing especially they see that in a movie theater which is you know yeah. what the uh, what filmmakers did in the 50s did so well which is kind of exploit all that and uh i'd like to do a whole series on like you know just 50s mon- monster movies in general whether it's a yeah. uh, ray harry house and uh stop motion stuff too or yeah, like a um, giant man the deadly mantis and stuff like that and i'll do the shameless pitch if you like it like this please like it subscribe and fucking so, so, you know, get us on Spotify. Comment. If you seriously, can. seriously, I like and if Patreon. If you're listening, you know, tell us. Let us know in the Discord if you what, what yeah. next to talk to. Yeah, listeners in the Discord. If we're leaving off any uh, thirty movies that we left off that you want us to go in depth on, or that we should, uh, you should suggest we should watch. Yeah. I'm, I'm always taking suggestions on things like Me this and to Cal watch. Will take time out of our busy weeks to 
Just throw, throw some money down and watch a new another movie. <laughs> exactly. It's like we're going back to the video stores. Yeah. So, yeah. I hope you guys have been enjoying this uh, journey with us here in Kaiju Paradise. And uh, we'll do it again next time here. I've been Cap. I'm Morrison. And uh, let's see. We won't do any closing arguments. We're just going to ride it out nice and peaceful here. And uh, we'll see you next time. See you later.